So the, 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 there's a couple issues uh, that arise in that situation. One is, is the disorder so rare that it's not being recognized by the clinician, but it's a known disorder. I mean, it's, it's been described before, but it's just very rare. That's one situation. The other situation is, in fact, it's a new disorder. It's genetic, but in fact, it's not been described before. And so the approach to the diagnosis in these two situations is different. In, in one case, if it's a known disorder, what you want to do is do a high quality genetic test that covers all the genes that are known to contribute to that disorder. I mean, for example, infantile epilepsy. There are hundreds of genes which when mutated can cause that condition. And what you'd want to do is test for all of them. On the other hand, there are situations where you suspect the patient has a genetic disorder, but it doesn't fit any well-known clinical picture. And there, um, I think the use of whole exome analysis has become much more common as a way of essentially sequencing thousands of genes, even up to 20,000, uh, every gene in the in human beings, sequence all of them and see if you can find an alteration which explains this previously unrecognized or unknown condition. And both of those are now being used in the rare disease situation when people have gone without a diagnosis. So the insurance is very complicated because um, you know, there are hundreds of different insurers, but there are some very large insurers and some that are much smaller. So in, in general, um, my company, for example, is now in contract with insurance companies that cover close to 190 million people in the United States. Uh, and that includes Medicare, but a whole variety of other, other um, um, insurance companies. And I think insurance companies in general are willing to pay for genetic diagnostic testing if it's going to answer a question for a family and is going to end the diagnostic odyssey, if it's going to give them a, an explanation for why what's happening to their child or is happening to them. Uh, you know, there are exceptions to that, but in, in general, that's reasonably well covered by most insurance companies. And what we have, and what I think is really important, is that we have an escape valve. If your insurance company is not going to pay for this test, we offer a patient pay option, which is reasonable. It's only $475. And the reason it's so inexpensive compared to what we ask the insurance companies to pay is our administrative overhead is essentially zero. We don't have prior authorizations. We don't have letters of medical necessity. We don't have all that stuff to deal with. And on top of that, we have a very generous patient assistance program. So if you are under, I believe it's six times the poverty level, there's a sliding scale for uh, how much uh, you would pay. So I think we're getting down into the range of a few hundred dollars, even for a family that may be of limited means that could really answer the question. The other thing with my company that I think is very important is we don't charge more for more genes. If you need a panel of 200 genes because that's what covers the clinical picture, that costs no more than if we do two genes. It's all the same.